What up, everybody? It's the Alex Leak and Friends NFL Podcast back for another week. It's the 2018 offseason, week number eight. I got the crew with me. I got David Stoyo in Canada. How's it going? And I got Gavin Heslop in Oregon. Green rain, go away. <laughs> Finally stopped raining here. That's a that's a welcome sight. Um, Let's get into it. Uh, Stoyo, what do you think about this move? The Ravens bring in Robert Griffin III to a one-year, $1 million deal. Do you think that's a uh, good move for the Ravens? That's a good move. He has uh, a few good years in him. He's a solid backup QB at this point. Yeah. He has played a few games, even a playoff game. So I would have him as a QB number two for sure. Yeah, I think he's a good backup and uh, less chance to get hurt that way and, you know, be there for Flacco if he if he goes down. What do you think of this move, Gavin? Yeah, I think it's a good move. It's a uh, pretty low contract numbers. Uh, he's only 28 and, def- and you know, has shown that he can be a starter in the NFL. Um you know, even if it was just for a year, but uh, yeah. definitely a good backup signing uh, for Baltimore. Nice. Um, the Denver Broncos signed punter Marquette King to a three-year deal worth seven mil uh, after being cut last week by the Raiders uh, for personality issues. Um, so a good move for Denver. And then the Raiders star linebacker Khalil Mack does not show up on the first day of off-season conditioning program. Uh, Mac does not have a long-term contract in place, and his agent, who also represents corner Tremaine Johnson, uh, held out the last two years and, would, and was franchise tagged by the Rams. Do you think that Khalil Mack is headed to possibly being franchise tagged or holding out uh, Stoyle for, with the Raiders? I don't think he's going to be tagged, but he's probably going to start a lot, and then... As they usually do, come back and play. Yeah. Do you think that he'll get the long-term deal he's looking for? I think so. He's such a good player. Yeah. I think I have to. Yeah, you think so too, Gavin? Yeah, he's the best defensive player that they have, best defensive player they've had in a while. Um, so they need they need to sign him. He's a draft choice of theirs, so definitely want to keep a guy like that around. Um, and he won't get tagged you know, this year, but... Um, you know, if there's any issues next year, it's a possibility. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how the off season or how the regular season goes uh, with Gruden there. Um, maybe see if the hype is real or if it's not, um, and maybe that'll determine whether he decides if he wants to stay or not. Yeah, we'll see how that goes in Oakland this year. You definitely got to keep Mac on the field if you can. Um, the Patriots, uh, after losing wide receivers Danny Amendola and Brandon Cooks this offseason, they signed Jordan Matthews to a one-year deal and agreed to a one-year deal with tight end Troy Nicholas. Gavin, do you like these moves? Uh, do you think Jordan Matthews is an adequate uh, to replace the guys they lost? He definitely has the potential. Um, he's been a guy, you know, he had almost 1,000 yards and eight touchdowns. In his sophomore year, eight touchdowns his rookie year as well. So he definitely has the talent um, and has produced before. Um, but we've seen him, uh, especially this last year in Buffalo, uh, kind of disappear. Uh, definitely, he was dealing with some injuries last year as well. But uh, it'll be interesting to see if the uh, the Patriots can retread him and get some more get some more uh, production out of him. He's talented and uh, maybe playing with uh, an elite QB is what he needs. I know his. The last year in Philly, he was with rookie Carson Wentz, who started out hot and kind of fizzled out at the end. So maybe he uh, maybe just needs to have a better quarterback playing with him, even though Wentz is, was plenty good this year. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see Jordan Matthews be healthy for a full season uh, again. Um, I'm, a, I'm a fan of his, and I think that he can put up good numbers when healthy. Um, Stoyo, do you think that Jordan Matthews and with Julian Edelman coming back is enough for Brady and uh, can be a successful offense this year for the Patriots? Absolutely. Brady has always found a way to make receivers look a lot better than actually they are. Yeah. So Brady has done better with worse. 
Yeah, I hope that it's uh, possibly it could be a good spot for Matthews, maybe a breakout year with Tom Brady. It just depends on health. Um, Panthers linebacker Thomas Davis announces via video that he has tested positive for PEDs and claims he never knowingly tried to cheat the game or take steroids, says he will accept the four-game suspension and be ready to go when he is allowed. Stoyo, how badly does this hurt the Panthers? It always does when you lose one of your players to PEDs. Yeah. And whenever an athlete apologizes and admits they didn't know what they put in their body, that's a mistake. As an athlete, this is your job to know exactly what goes in. Yep. And you can't hide behind that defense. So. Yeah. What do you think, Gavin? Um, do you think the Panthers can survive these uh, four games? I definitely think so. Um, while Thomas Davis was definitely an elite defender at one point, um, he's 35. Um, he's not what he what he once was. Um, he's not the level he had been playing at. Uh, there have been reports that they were considering decreasing his snaps in favor of one of their younger guys, Shaq, Shaq Thompson, this year. Yeah. Uh, so this might just uh, expedite the process. Um, but it's you know it's always a uh, unfortunate to have one of the leaders in your locker room, especially on Carolina's defense, which has been one of the stronger points of their team the last few years. Uh, see him go go down. They lost Starla Tulele, um, so it'll be on Keekly to to lead that locker room. Uh, on the field and off. Yeah, and you make a good point. You got a guy like Shaq Thomas who's up and coming and Thomas Davis who's a veteran, been in the league for a while, and he might be starting to slow down. And this, I think this hurts Thomas Davis more than anybody because uh, it might speed up the process of him getting replaced there in Carolina. Um, so we'll see how that goes. The Browns are in the news this week. They trade... Quarterback Kevin Hogan to the Redskins in exchange for a sixth-round pick this year, uh, making it for a whole new quarterback room in 2018. Hogan had uh, requested the trade two days earlier. In other Cleveland news, the Browns agreed to a contract extension with newly acquired wide receiver Jarvis Landry, worth five years and $75.5 million, with 47 mil guaranteed. Uh, not bad for a slot receiver there, Stoyle. Yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Fifteen million for a slot receiver. Yeah. Do you no, th thank you. You don't think it's worth it? No. That's about five million. Too much. Yeah. Year. I would have paid him ten, but not fifteen. I like uh, it. I so think. I the Browns achieve over there. Yeah, that's the thing. I think that he has the potential for his numbers to drop with Tyrod Taylor. I don't think that's a great fit. But if you're Cleveland and you got the opportunity to bring a guy like Landry in, I'm all for it. Um, you want to get out of 0-16. You want to get out of the bottom of the division. Moves like this should help. What do you think of the Jarvis Landry contract, Gavin? I think it's good for them to make sure they keep a talented player on their team for a while. Um, it's not something that the Browns have been able to do outside of Joe Thomas and his the goodness of his heart. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, all of their talent, talented guys tend to leave. Uh, so it's good to sign on their young guy as they're going to be bringing in a you know young quarterback. He's going to need weapons to throw to. Um, that being said, it's a little rich for my blood for Jarvis Landry. If you look at some of the other contracts that have come out over the last year, you've got players like DeAndre Hopkins who had five years, $81 million. Um, $50 million guaranteed, which is more money than Landry, but I think that Hopkins is in a tier above Landry, so to have Landry's contract be so close uh, seems too expensive for me. Um, you've got uh, Antonio Brown signed a four-year $68 million. Again, he's probably two or three tiers above Landry, but yeah, yep. the money's more. But still, I think that's too much. you got a guy like Devontae Adams, who I think is uh, – he's not – I don't think he's as talented, but he's closer than the other guys. Four years, $58 million. Um, I think that's uh, a little bit closer. And the big difference to me in Adam's contract is $24 million guaranteed versus the 47 for Landry. I think that's a lot of guaranteed money to throw at a guy that isn't a, uh, a number one receiver in my mind. But as a Lions fan, I know that when your team sucks, you've got to overpay for guys and hope that eventually you'll be able to accrue some talent and get some people coming over for cheaper. Um, so I don't know that the Browns really had any other option. Yeah. Um, 
but I think it's too much money for him, but I also think it was the right move, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, and uh, to that point, Antonio Brown and DeAndre Hopkins are the only two wide receivers in the NFL getting paid more than Landry now. That's top three money, and uh, we've had the argument before, and I think we came to a around the idea that I said at least he was top 10, but top three money, that's a lot for Cleveland, but I guess that's the going rate for a top-end receiver. Um, Some more, well, former Cleveland Brown in the news, free agent quarterback Johnny Manziel tells the Dan Patrick Show in response to a question about what happened in Cleveland, quote, if Cleveland had done any of their homework, they would have known that I wasn't a guy that would really come in and watch film that I didn't really know the X's and O's of football. I played in a spread offense, end quote. He says quarterback Brian Hoyer didn't help him and that Manziel lost confidence on the practice field because of that, and then depression and mental health issues took over from there. Um, Stoyo, what do you make of Johnny Manziel's comments about the Cleveland Browns here? I saw Johnny Manziel... Stepped away from the game to mature. Yeah. I thought he matured what happened. Those comments, to me, means you haven't learned from <laughs> that mistake yet. yet. Why is uh, Hoyer supposed to help you steal his job? Exactly. Hoyer is a veteran. This is one of the few times he had the shot to be a starting QB in the league. Why would he help you? So, so you're I, saying... You're Johnny Manziel, and you're trying to get back into the NFL, and then you're going to criticize the Browns for had even dra- drafting you? Like, they should have known better? I don't... Maybe he's trying to take a shot at the Browns, like most people are doing right now, but I don't think he's the right guy to be saying this. Um, do you think that this definitely hurts his comeback attempt, Doyle? Absolutely. I mean, Kyle Shanahan was his OC. Yeah. You were about to tell me that... He couldn't have asked him anything. Gaussman had one of the brightest uh, offensive minds in the game right now. I wouldn't have helped him out. Yeah. I think he needs to take responsibility for what happened. Exactly. And he was the one at fault. Yep, exactly. And by the time, like, you're, in co- you're not in college anymore. You're professional now. Like, this is not their job to motivate you. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I would think that coming out of college, you got to be like, the games are over with. Uh, it's time to learn the offensive system. I, I don't think there's any quarterback in NFL history that can just jump into the NFL and be like, and take it, you know, just be like, I'm not going to study as hard as I should. I'm just going to go out there and wing it. It doesn't go like that. The NFL is much tougher. What do you think of these comments, Gavin? Yeah, I... I uh, appreciate his honesty to an extent, how you're saying that he wasn't ready and you know saying how he was not prepared for the NFL. Yeah. Um, but what I don't like is him calling out um, the team and saying essentially that they were stupid for drafting him. Um, and I especially don't like him calling out Hoyer um, and criticizing him for not, you know, essentially, he's, in a way he's blaming Hoyer for his, for his faults. Um, and I, I don't like that. I don't like... Um, if you're supposed to be coming out and maturing and showing that to teams and then you come out and bash uh, an organization and another player at your position, uh, that doesn't show maturity to me. Um, and I, I wouldn't touch him. Um, I think it might be a product of him, you know, the, the depression and stuff that he was talking about could have been a product of him being good at the position all the way up until he got to the NFL um, without having to try just his natural abilities and now suddenly he had to work hard, and he wasn't prepared for that. So I, I don't doubt that it's that it could be true, um, but it's just unfortunate that he did throw some people under the bus in the process. Yeah, I mean it could be true. Who knows what could have happened there in Cleveland? But it's not a good look to come out there and say that, especially when you're trying to rebuild your reputa- your reputation. Like Stoyo said, he's trying to come back more mature, ready to handle the game, and these are not smart comments. He went on to say that in his second season with the Browns, um, Josh McCown helped him out a lot more and was there for him. Anytime he had any questions, Josh McCown would help him. And uh, Manziel said that was much better for him, but he still wasn't ready. And that he referred to his rookie year quarterback room as, quote, toxic. So we'll see what happens with Johnny Manziel going forward. 
I get the feeling that he's going to have to go to the CFL and prove himself, prove that he's got he's still got ultra talent, and maybe the NFL will give him a shot later on. We'll see. Um, Stoyo, the Saints signed wide receiver Cam Meredith. Um, the Bears had a chance, had multiple days to match it, but declined to. And so Cam Meredith goes to the Saints. Do you agree with this decision by the Chicago Bears? I do not one bit. I thought we should have re-signed him. But I guess they didn't think his injury healed correctly or something. Yeah. Because they were able to get him for two years for about $5 million a year, which is not an awful deal. And well, they decided not to match it. Yeah, it's interesting because two years ago he had pretty good numbers with us. And then it looks like we decided instead to give the money to back up tight end Dion Sims. Yeah. Uh, two years ago you had Alshon and Cam, Mer- Cam Meredith being your one and two. Mm-hmm. And they had close to 900 yards each. Two years later, both of those are gone. And you had what exactly for them in return? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. I don't have I don't like seeing talent leave your football team just for free. Yeah. Um not the smartest move by the Bears unless they saw something major with his knee uh that they didn't want to bring him back, but we'll see on that front. Um the Bears quarterback Mitch Trubisky uh on the new coaching staff and game plan, quote, I really feel as though I was built for this offense, end quote. Head coach Matt Nagy says he's excited to develop Trubisky with much of the same principles Alex Smith used in Kansas City the last couple seasons. Um, So good news, good stuff to look forward to out of the quarterback room in Chicago. The Bears also host Alabama safety Minka Fitzpatrick and Ohio State corner Denzel Ward. Um, Gavin, do you think that uh, Mitch Trubisky fits the Alex Smith uh, role? Yeah, I think he can. Uh, he is a uh, more mobile quarterback than uh, people might have realized, and Astorio pointed that out um, earlier in the season. Yeah. And Alex Smith also fits that role. He actually was, uh, he'd get some scrambling yards in and, and make some plays on his feet. Um, and as long as Trubisky can uh, not throw games away, uh, he can be uh, a pretty good Alex Smith replacement, I think. Yeah. Um, Stoyo, do you agree? Do you think that Chubisky can run an Alex Smith-style offense and have success doing it? Yeah, I believe so. And I think it's, that was a good hire. Hire someone that believes in you, your QB already. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see how it goes forward. I'm looking forward to seeing the new-look Bears offense. Um, the Cowboys signed defensive end Coney Ely, looking in, to improve their pass rush. He had just one sack and one interception in 2017 with the Jets. The Texans signed wide, rece- wide receiver Joe Webb. And tight end Richard Rodgers signs a one-year deal with the Eagles. Gavin, what do you make of the Lions bringing in backup quarterback Matt Castle in Detroit? Well, I'm... Um- a little worried for uh, Matt Stafford's knees now, because whenever Matt Castle's involved, that means someone's <laughs> knee is going out. Um, an elite quarterback's knee is going out, so that's uh, that's Stafford territory right there. Uh, um, but um, I, I think it's a good hire. It's an experienced guy. I don't think he's going to, you know, we get us to the playoffs if Stafford were to go down or anything like that, but um, he does have some experience, you know, starting for a team, running an offense. Um, so I you know, can appreciate the hire as far as that goes, um, getting a backup for for our team. Yeah. Um, yeah, it should be a good backup, good hire there for Detroit. Uh, hopefully for your guys' sake, you won't need to see him on the field, but we'll see. Never, never want to see Matt Castle on the field. <laughs> unless he's on the other side of the ball. <laughs> um, the Giants defensive coordinator James Betcher says he's going to give corner Eli Apple a clean slate for 2018 and says he's excited to work with him. Um, Safety Landon Collins, who's his teammate, said uh, that they've buried the hatchet, him and Eli, after calling him a cancer on on a radio show last season. Um, So do you think that it can work, and do you think that these two can wipe the slate clean in New York style? 
Uh, for me, winning is everything. Yeah. If they start winning, it's going to cure all the problems. And if they lose a few games, then it's going to be the same thing. So if you can win, everything will be forgiven. So I have, um, according to an unnamed source, uh, a team, an NFC team, turned down two first-round picks for Odell Beckham Jr. That would be a lot to give up for a wide receiver. Um, do you think that if you were a team, would you be willing to give up that high a price for for a guy like Odell Beckham Jr.? No, but I would take in those picks if offered for a top wide receiver. Yeah, you think two first-round picks is way overpaying for him? Uh, I don't know. It's close. But if you believe you can afford him, he might be just that good. Yeah. What do you think, uh, Gavin? Do you think that the Giants would be better off keeping Odell Beckham or if they can get two first-round picks, move on from such a star receiver? Uh, I think you got to try and keep him if possible. Um, yeah. Even if they don't draft one this year, you got to think that the Giants are going to be looking at a, uh, a new quarterback in the not-too-distant future, and you want to keep some weapons around him. I know they have Sterling Shepard. Um, as a, a young receiver that's relatively talented, but he's nothing like Odell Beckham. So um, I think it's worth trying to keep around, but it, some players it, it just becomes a, a solid business decision to move on from them um, if, if the price is right. And two first-round picks, um, especially if the team that you're getting them from is a, is a subpar one, yeah. it, it could be worth it to move on. And also depending, you know, if they were somewhere this year and they really like one of the wide receivers in the draft and they can replace him, uh, get a cheaper contract, and move on from the headache that he could be causing in the locker room, um, I think that they might consider it worth it. But I totally agree with Stoyo. Winning is everything. Um, as, as soon as they start winning, all this um, Odell Beckham uh, talk as far as his, you know, his concerns around the locker room will disappear. Yeah, and it might be nice to have a guy like Odell Beckham stick around, especially if the Giants draft and try to bring up a new young quarterback. Um, Gavin, what do you make of newly acquired Rams defensive tackle and Donald Kung Su? Uh, he just signed a one-year deal, and he said he signed a one-year deal on purpose because he wants to, quote, prove himself. Do you think Su will has enough in the tank to prove himself and get another long-term deal? I definitely think he has enough this year to be effective, especially when you're playing next to Aaron Donald, who already is going to be demanding double teams. Um, he's going to be facing a lot less pressure than he likely was facing uh, in Miami. So uh, he definitely has the opportunity to put up some big numbers. And given his past production, I think someone will give him, uh, you know, they're not going to give him a seven year deal. I can't imagine, but I see getting a multi-year deal after this year, if he can uh, you know, stay on the field, uh, take down the quarterback uh, and not kick anybody in the nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's, he's always a wild card with Sue. Wild card. <laughs> Stoyo, what do you make of the uh, of Sue? Do you think that um, he's worth another big long term deal? Uh, one more year away. I mean, I think he definitely has another contract in him. Yeah. I don't know how big, but this year is going to be interesting to see. He's never played with someone as dominant as Donald right next to him, so he could be getting a lot of single coverage, and for him, that'd be perfect. Yeah. So I'm interested in seeing how that's going to happen. And that defense is going to be nasty, so... Yeah, I agree. I would say no excuses for Sue this year. He needs to put up some numbers. I mean, like you said, Aaron Donald uh, is on that line, too. He should be getting the double team. So this is an opportunity for Sue to really rack up some numbers and make a big impact on the field. Um, Stoya, what do you make of uh, the Bucks cornerback Jameis Winston responds on Twitter to a Tampa Bay Times post questioning what the team will do with wide receiver Deshaun Jackson. He responds, quote, We got this. I personally will make sure we show how valuable Deshaun is to our team and the NFL. Um... Jackson only caught 50 passes for 668 yards and three touchdowns in 2017. And I think we're all expecting more out of Deshaun Jackson in 2018. 
Uh, would that be fair to say, Stoyle? Absolutely. 2017 was a rough season for them. Yeah. And sometimes with wide receiver, it takes you a while to build better chemistry. But if they work out together during the offseason, then who knows what can happen. So yeah. it would be interesting to see. I'm a famous fan, so I wish him the best. Yeah, the offense should be clicking. Yeah, it should. Players. Yeah, it should. They've they've made some moves. They've made some adjustments. I expect a lot out of this team. I expected a lot last year, and I just feel like last year was a down year. And I think that they should respond and have success. Um, I expect a lot out of Jameis Winston. He's got the weapons, so it's time to show what he can do. Um, Gavin, do you expect a bounce back year from the Bucks? Yeah, I expect them to be better than last year, but I don't feel like that's saying that much. Um, in in regard to Deshaun Jackson, um, he's getting a little bit older, and he's always been known for his speed and athleticism, and that's been how he's been able to get separation and make plays. And too often you see uh, players where that's their, their strongest weapon. Uh, you see them kind of suddenly drop off as the snap count goes up, as father time starts catching up with them. Um, and it could be that it was uh, an issue with Jameis, but I also think there's a good chance that it could be uh, just that Deshaun's getting a little bit up there in age and you know he's not able to keep up the pace that he had been before. Um, yeah. Yeah, that'll be interesting uh, to see how that goes forward. You could be right. I mean, De- Deshaun Jackson's been in the league since, I believe, 2007. So starting to get some miles on the tires. We'll see if he... He'll he'll be 32 at the... near the end of this season, which uh, for a wide receiver, especially a speed receiver, is pretty high for age. Not a lot of guys can keep... um, can rely on speed alone to be productive at that age. Yeah. Not everybody can be Steve Smith. (laughs) Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace, yep. Um, More trouble brewing in Seattle. Seahawks GM John Schneider attends draft prospect quarterback Josh Allen's Pro Day in Wyoming. And uh, Seattle franchise quarterback Russell Wilson was not very pleased with the visit. And his agent Mark Rogers asked the Seahawks, quote, is there anything we need to know, end quote. Um, Stories like this may affect the upcoming Russell Wilson contract negotiations. Uh, Stoyo, what do you make? Do you think that um, Russell Wilson's camp has reason to be frustrated with their GM attending another quarterback's pro day? No. <laughs> the GM is just doing his job. It's the off season. He's just being a GM. There's no problem. Zero story there. Yeah. What do you think, Gavin? Should Should Russell Wilson feel slighted? I don't think that he should. Um, I think that it's, the, like Sawyer said, the GM's just doing his job and he's scouting people. I know there's been years past where the Lions have scouted some of the top quarterback recruits, um, and I never once thought, well, maybe they're going to get rid of Stafford. Like, yeah. It never once crossed my mind as a serious thought. Um, but the, the difference, though, with the Seahawks is that they seem to be in a little bit of a rebuilding mode. And if you look back at the year that they won the Super Bowl, um, their, their formula was building through the draft, a uh, strong defense, and a cheap, cheap quarterback. Yeah. And right now, Russell Wilson is not cheap. His uh, cap hit this year is 23, almost $24 million, And the next year, it'll be over twenty five. dollars um, So yeah. I think that, that they're looking out, and I think that it would be foolish of them to not, um, you know, if, if they like one of these quarterbacks well enough, um, to consider trading away Russell Wilson, getting that cheap quarterback, and uh, trying to make another playoff run. Yeah, I heard people saying that Russell Wilson's new contract could go close up there near $30 million a year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the Seahawks do moving forward if they want to put that much into their quarterback. Um, but we'll see. Big, uh, big decisions coming up for Seattle. Um, another big decision, Seattle was scheduled to bring in free agent quarterback Colin Kaepernick for an interview slash workout. 
but after they did not get the answer they wanted on whether or not he would protest during the anthem in 2018 and what his plans were moving forward with the lawsuit, the Seahawks have since postponed and canceled the visit. Um, Gavin, what do you think this means going forward for Kaepernick? Is this a good sign for Kaepernick that he could potentially be getting a job? Or is this another bad sign for Colin Kaepernick? Uh, I think it's a good sign. This is the first news that I've heard about Kaepernick even having a chance to go anywhere. So yeah. um, I think that in and of itself is a good sign that a team is looking to sign him. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if we find out what the truth actually was. You have Kaepernick saying um, in his camp saying that they canceled the trip just because he said, just because he wouldn't commit. And then you have Seattle saying that they canceled because they he didn't say he had a plan mm-hmm. for you know how he was going to deal with the protesting or you know stopping it or what his plan was moving forward and they didn't like that which could be saying the exact same thing as Kaepernick um, but uh, it doesn't sound as bad so um, it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out um, but I don't think that um, I don't think that it's bad news for Kaepernick by any means. Yeah, do you agree, Stoyo? Is this good or bad news for Kaepernick? I guess it's kind of good news that some team is interested, but this could have been his one and only opportunity to sign. Yeah. I could have seen a team like Seattle taking a shot on him, but if Seattle doesn't want him, who else? 